to another episode of Fluff Hammer. As you can see, it is late at night. Castle and Crow got released today. I was at work all day. Got the kids to bed, my wife's got to bed. It's time to get painting. I'm gonna need some coffee. Let's go. Okay, so here we go. Um, basically, we're going to start off with the sub-assemblies. I've got the left shoulder pad, the head sprayed grace here. I've got the rest of the body assembled. I've left the cloak separate, the backpack separate, the left arm separate, the right shoulder pad separate. So the body, right shoulder pad, left arm, and the backpack have all been sprayed with Games Workshop lead belcher. The back of the cloak and the top of the banner have been sprayed with uh, Memphiston Red, also Games Workshop Citadel paint. And then, yeah, like I said before, the head and the shoulder pad are grey here. So we're going to start off with Stormhost Silver and a large army painter dry brush. And it's just going to be a case of hitting the entire model. So especially with this lead belcher spray, it's 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 got some weird kind of gloss to it. So if you apply a wash directly to it, it will all pool in in kind of in the recesses like you would expect to wash, but it it's actively like slides away from the surfaces, so you can't like tint them. Um, and what we're going to go obviously with the grey knights, we're going to go with the traditional kind of blue tinted silver. So I'm going to want to do an all over dry brush, um, not with the aim of you know colouring the whole thing the same colour, but just basically giving some traction to the Stormhouse Silver and that will also give us some traction for a wash um, so it doesn't all just you know kind of pull away from from where we want it we'll be able to get a nice blue tint on it so I'm going to crack on with that and then I'll catch up in a minute for the next bit. Okay, so here we go. We've got the Gulliman Blue Glaze. I believe these aren't available anymore, but the other option is Ultramarines Blue Contrast and Contrast Medium. Um, now, I think this is roughly five parts Contrast Medium to one part Contrast um, Ultramarines Blue, and that gets you a very similar result. Um, just make sure and shake up your Contrast or your Glaze as well um, before you do it, because they do have a tendency to separate. And now basically we're going to aim to, you know, copy the box art really. So it's going to be lighter at the tops and then the blue is going to be heavier at the bottoms. As you watch as I go around, I'm going to apply the blue gl uh, glaze and then I'll just be touching bits with my finger or my thumb just to rub it off the, the higher areas. So you saw the little like knobble on the bottom of the shin pad there. Just wiped over it just to make sure that bit was nice and shiny and clean. Uh, just obviously gives you a good effect to keep your your highest high points um, cleaner so I'm just going to follow this now all over the entire model and make sure that all the metal has been thoroughly blue washed okay so next up we're going to Volpus pink and Leviathan blue and I'm going to mix these together to make a sort of purpley pinky contrast and I'm just going to directly apply that over the entire sword. And then I'm going to leave that to one side to dry while we crack on with other stuff. So this is a good way of working it when you're doing projects like this. If you want to keep going, you can obviously just put something to one side while it's drying and then crack on with something else. So we've got Dryad Bark and Memphis on Red here. And we're basically going to mix them together um, to, to just make a slightly darker Memphis and red and then I'm going to really heavily di dilute it with water so it's probably maybe five parts water to one part paint and we're just gonna yeah just glaze it into the recesses 
Um, as you can see, just, just pick the low points and glaze it in. And just flip the cloak over and do it again on the other side. And as you can see, it's not really changing the paint too much. It's really, really thin, but it gives a great effect. It's really good for just smooth blends. It's subtle. Um, yeah, it's a really good technique. And uh, what we're going to be doing across this whole bit and across the flag is just kind of progressively add a little bit more dried bark. And we're also then going to do uh, a glaze of pure dried bark in the darkest recesses. Okay, next up is Vallejo Game Color Bloody Red. And again, we're just gonna dilute that, not, not as much as we were for the glazes. So there's probably 50-50 with water. And then we're just gonna pick out the highlights. So as you can see already, the you know progressive glazes has given us, you know, five, six, seven different tones already in the red. And, and that leaves us not having to do a huge amount of highlighting. You know, highlighting is one of those things that takes a really long amount of time. So if you can get, you know, the sh start at a mid-tone, shade it down, saves you a lot of time. So next up, we're going into Pro Acryl um, Gold. You can use uh, Retributor from Games Workshop if you don't have Pro Acryl. Um, I really like it. To be honest, if I was to paint it again, I, I would use Retributor. The Pro Acryl is a lighter gold, which is nice for what I was kind of going for. Um, in this model, but but basically by the time you've washed and, and shaded them recesses and then highlighted up with Libraya, um, this base coat is really just a base coat and the Pro Acryl coverage isn't as good as the coverage on the Retributor armor. So again, like I said, if I was to go back and do this again, I would be using Retributor armor for this stage. Um, all the gold's now done. So we're going to go with Reichland Flesh Aid Gloss over all the gold. And then we're going to be picking out the little um, vents and stuff in the back of the legs. And the sections on the insides of the arms where the armour bends. And I'm just going to go straight over that with Black Templar Contrast. And what that will give you, yeah, obviously it's over metallic. So it will give you a very, very slightly metallic looking um, recess. It's almost like it's really, really, really dark gunmetal. Next up, we're moving back to the sword. So the contrast paint has had a good time to dry. We're going to go in with Xerus Purple to start with. And we're going to dry brush all over the entire thing. And I'm, I'm pretty much going to leave the tips, though, where I want it to be quite smoky at the end. And we're going to apply some washes later to darken that down. So all over the sword all over the the flames but then leaving as you can see just right the tips we, we're pretty much leaving a lot darker um xerus purple's a really nice color great coverage and then we're going to be going into gene stealer purple um you might notice i haven't washed the brush and also i haven't put it on a different area so i've kind of blended it in the dry brush uh, and also in the in the paper and as you can see there I'm just gauging how much paint is on the brush before I go into the model obviously you need to be careful with dry brushing if you go in too heavy it's, it's quite a hard thing to you know bring back um, so it's almost to start again really so that's why you can see on the paper here I'm testing it out as I go um, adding more Jean Steeler purple there you see just blending again in the brush um, moving some bits out of the way and then yeah just testing the brush making sure I haven't got a heavy load sometimes you can end up with like a heavy load on one side of the brush and it'll seem like you've dried it all off and then there'll be a, a lump so just make sure and you know be thorough now I've started to add some bold titanium white into this mix as well still not washing my brush just blending it through um, it, it will be really good because you'll keep the same hue all the way through because you're not changing like drastically, you know, dip one, dip another, dip another, where you'll get like um, quite evident blends as such where, you know, you can 
sometimes if you're going through like teals you might have a more bluey base coat a very teal you know like um mid coat and then when you get into the highlights if you've mixed it with white it can go pastely and washed out or if you've mixed it with something else you know it can be a bit too bright so it's a little tip when you're dry brushing if you're trying to blend stuff like this you don't really need to wash your brush just just keep adding what you want you know if you need to to dip in white four or five times before you get the effect you want then then great you know just just keep dipping and going as you can see it's got a fantastic effect on that now it's you know i kind of took an uh, inspiration from the box art but kind of made my own thing out of it um, the good thing is with these little dry brushes as well you can flip the blade on the side like i did there and edge it so you're almost getting like an edge highlight on one side. You could do it on both sides, obviously, but there's there's flames on the other. Um, and now we're going to go into some heavy purple from Vallejo. And really heavily water this down. So it's probably, you know, a four to one water to paint. As you can see on my nail there, it's really transparent. And then I did another little dip as well in water before I, before I went ahead with that. Basically with this, you can see again, I'm just wiping away the top to keep my, my sharp edge. It's just a really light glaze. But where you get gradients on that dry brush or, or you know, brush marks, this will really, really smooth it out. So I always recommend if you're dry brushing, not to let it be your last kind of stage. So next we're going into, um, I think it's Gory Red from Vallejo. I would prefer probably to use Corn Red on that, but I don't have any. And then uh, Ushabiti Bone on all the Purity Seal um, tags and um, over all the books and everything like that. And then so over the red we did, the gory red, we're going to be doing some Army Painter Dark Tone uh, over all the Purity Seals as well. And then we're now going to get ready and start assembling some bits and pieces here. So these are all the pieces that are going on. I'm going to put the head on as well. Oh no, I'm going to leave the head off, sorry. Leave the head off with the backpack. And there's a little front tag thing you can see there just under the H, um, which will be staying off as well. As I said earlier about the washers, here we go on the tips of the flames. I'm just now going to put some uh, Army Painter Dark Tone and just on the tips, start about a third of the way down the flames and work my way up. And I just built that up over a couple of layers just to give you kind of a dark smoky effect on the edges. Next we're going into Skeleton Horde contrast paint from Games Workshop. And that's just going to be straight over all the areas we did Ushabti Bone. I, I picked up Wraith Bone when I'd when I done it earlier but it's Ushabti Bone is what I used. Next we're going back to Pro Acryl for Bold Titanium White with an Artist Opus Series S size one and we're just going to edge highlight all the armor panels or all the armor panels that are white that is don't don't highlight the silver with white um so you've just got this front left shoulder pad and then the helmet uh, obviously totally white so they were sprayed gray sear and then we're just gonna straight up highlight them with pro quill white i do about two goes over on this so a slightly thinner layer first with slightly wider highlights and then sharper highlights um, with with a much more pure, um, I think it's even undiluted white over top of that. And then we just need to pick out those little vents in the face with Abaddon Black. And then we've got Vallejo Off-White, which is what we're gonna be highlighting all the books and purity seal tags and everything with. And then we're now gonna go into the banner I know we're going quick and fast here, guys, so you might just need to, you know, pause or rewind, whatever. Um, the tutorial ended up at like an hour and 10 minutes long, which I thought was a bit heavy, so I've speeded some of this up. So we've done two coats of Celestra Grey on the banner there. And back into Pro Acryl Titanium White. Um, so two coats of Celestra is enough to cover pretty much anything. And then we're, we're going to literally... Um, edge highlight all these flames so all around the white bit here right to the tips and then we're even going to go down the sides and down the bottom as well 
so it'll give you a nice shaded effect on the white um, you know with white areas you don't want them to be solid celestial gray is really really pale so it makes a lovely kind of mid-tone and shade on white as you can see there so the the celestial gray in the middle it gives us a lovely lovely effect on the banner here we are we're getting into kind of the, the finishing stages now we're going to be doing some storm host silver and basically i've picked my light source which is going to be top right hand side so i'm going to be using my artist opus series d extra small and i'm just going to be stippling a highlight um, and basically how you do it you can see now so i'm holding the model up and i'm, I'm holding my brush from the light source and then dabbing down so any bits, real, realistically, any bits that aren't going to be from that angle are going to be darker. So I'm adding the most paint to these highest points from the angle where I'm, I'm coming at it as my light source. So again, this top right hand corner, brightening that up, straight down this leg where it's sticking out, again, right from that top right hand. Um, so I'm going to follow that on all around the model. I'm going to pick out a few little bits, obviously, if we need, you know, a little bit of an edge highlight or something where it's really dark and I just want to brighten it up. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to be working that around the model now. So now we're going into Wild Rider Red, and that's going to be to highlight the edges of the purity seals, the edges of the book, and then I've done the handle on the sword, um, Memphis and Red as well, and washed that. So just little edge highlights, and the cables on the helmet were done, um, Memphis and Red, and then Wild Rider Red as well. We're going to be working on this little vial, so I've painted it all Abaddon Black. And then I'm going to do a cross effect. So I've literally done a really thin line down and a really thin line across. Um, and then I'm just going to be adding, you know, um, bold titanium white again to the blue. I think it's electric blue by Vallejo that we're using here. Um, just on the wet palette, blending it as you can see now, adding more white. Going to get really fine. There you go. Nice, nice, fine little cross. And just make sure the edge highlight the tops of the bottle as well. And then we're going to dip straight into the white. And I'm going to do a dot in the centre. Just dried on my brush. It's so hot at the moment. <laughs> um, there we go. Nice dot in the centre. And then my light source is top right. So I'm going to pick a little white dot top right. To really sell the, uh, the gloss glass effect. And we also copied that exact effect on the eye on the sword handle as well. So we're pretty much there now. The black areas on the Storm Bolter and the back of the post on the banner, stuff like that, have all been painted Abaddon and black and then highlighted with Celestra Grey as well. Here we are, here's the finished model. I hope you all love it. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. I have a Patreon as well where I do giveaways. So if you want to support me on that, you can find me at uh, patreon.com forward slash fluffhammer. I'll also put my Element Games link in the description below and get a little, bit, a little bit of a kickback from that. So thanks everyone so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.